Do you wanna know all the different ways to get TV on your RV? We're gonna break it down for you. Hey guys, it's Izzy and MJ from Endless RV and the channel that brings you the best in RV DIYs, product reviews, RV tours, and so much more. If you're new to the channel, we invite you to subscribe below and also make sure to hit the notification bell. And if you're a subscriber and back for another video, we thank you for joining us. Make sure to stay to the end guys, because we're gonna tell you the method that we use and love. All right, so if you're the camping type that doesn't watch TV and you're just by the campfire and none of this matters to you, this is not really geared toward you, this video is gonna be geared more toward the people that like the luxuries of home on their RV. Right, and just wanna know the different options available. So number one is over the air. Now we're gonna give you disadvantages and advantages of each. So the disadvantages of over the air is you are at the mercy of your location. So if you are not in a location that is gonna pick up local channels, you're, you're going to be at a loss for that. With this also, you're going to be limited. All right? In many cases, there's going to be very limited channels that you're going to be able to access. Another disadvantage of this is a lot of times you're not going to be able to watch what you want, right? You're going to have to get the local yep. channels, right? That's it. And another thing is you're going to be not going to be able to record or DVR as you would with other cases. Sorry for the noise. We're at a campground and you get what you get, right? So let's talk about the advantages of over the air. Number one, it's free. All right. Number two, almost all RVs are going to come with a built in over the air antenna. All right, so you're set up for it. Another thing is most places, at least within civilization, are going to get some channels. So you, again, you're not gonna have, probably to have that variety, but you will get something. So that's number one over the air. All right, so number two is gonna be a uh, cable hookup. So cable hookup is only gonna be if your campsite is wired for cable. Now, a lot of campsites do offer that. Uh, state parks and other places don't. So you're gonna be mostly at a private campground and you're probably gonna be paying a premium. Some other negatives are you're going to be limited to what you know subscription the campground has, right? And most of the time it's just like basic cable. So you might get like 50 channels or so. You will not be able to see all the channels that per se you may want. Your RV has to be prepped for cable. Now that's pretty standard on most RVs, but if you have an older RV, it may not be prepped for cable. So that could be a disadvantage also. And finally, you have to carry your coax cable with you, right? So most of the time how it works, you're gonna have your pedestal with either your water or electricity and the, the coax connection will be there. And then you run that cable from that connection to whatever connection you have in your RV. And also um, not being able to watch your favorite shows like pay-per-views and things right, like yeah. that. Right, yeah. You can't get pay-per-views yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. It's just going to be basically what right. the campground provides. And we like our UFC, so. Yes. All right, so the advantages of cable, there's just a couple that we thought of. Uh, one is many cases, it's free, but is it really free? A lot of times it's included in your site premium site right so you actually do kind of want to pay for it anyway um, another thing is it will work uh, depend not depending on what the weather is right so a lot of ways will depend on is it raining is it cloudy are there trees this will work no matter what the weather conditions are yeah it's just a hard wire connection mm -hmm. so it'll always mm -hmm. work all right the third way and what I think I see the most out there is really popular uh, is satellite. You have uh, in motion, which means there's usually a dome on your roof and that satellite will work while you're in motion, right? You have a uh, stationary, usually you'll see the dish, it's the ones that they come up and they kind of point. Uh, and that's really gonna give you the best reception, uh, but it, does, it only works when you're stationary. And then you kind of have the portable, right? And those are the ones you'll see the kind of a little dome, you'll see people setting them up either on their roof or kind of like on a tripod. There's advantages and disadvantages to all. Um, the portable is usually the cheaper one. They could be several hundred dollars. The ones on the roof are quite expensive. They're uh, low to mid to high uh, thousands, you know, like a thousand up to like $2,000 for some of them. So what are some of the negatives, right? So number one, I just mentioned, it can be costly, okay? Two, a lot of these systems, they are limited to the amount of TVs that they can uh, connect to, right? So you usually need like a little receiver box you know, think of it as like the old school cable box, right? For every television, you're gonna need a cable box. Remember that? The old yeah. School <laughs> uh, you have uh, you have to have a cable box for each. Uh, also, you're gonna have to you're, you're limited pretty much to like two providers. Is gonna be Dish, 
and what's the other one? It's uh, DirecTV. Those are kind of the two providers in the United States. Now, you're going to have to have a subscription to them, right? So they have different subscriptions from like, you know, 50 channels up to like the works, like everything, right? And the more you have, the more costly it is, right? So that's kind of a limit also. You have to have a subscription to them. They can be affected by um, trees, right? So satellite needs a clear shot of the sky. Now, like where we're at right now, it's, it's pretty open. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're in a heavily wooded area, it certainly may be a problem if there's a lot of trees. And the only reason I know this is because we used to have satellite at home and um, they actually had it mounted really high, like on a rooftop to clear the trees. That could be a problem on an RV that's not so high. But we couldn't watch TV during a rainstorm. That's correct. And that's going to take <laughs> us to the next problem. Uh, bad weather will affect satellite TV. And we know this from experience. Electrical storms will affect it. Really bad weather will affect it. Snow will affect mm -hmm. it. If you get snow yeah. on your satellite dish, you won't get reception. Mm -hmm. And that's happened to us at right. home, right? Also, uh, not all channels are supported, right? So I'll just give one for example, like ESPN Plus is not available on satellite TV. That is strictly a stream only channel, right? And if you are like an ESPN, UFC, you don't get it. So that's definitely some disadvantages of having satellite. So the advantages of satellite TV, there's a few. You will definitely get a good picture if you have a good signal, right? So if you have that straight shot to the sky, you're gonna be good to go, right? No snow, rain, like we had talked about. So that's a really good um, advantage to it. You're not at the mercy of cellular coverage. Again, up to the sky, you're gonna get that picture. You can get satellite internet, but it's gonna be costly and it's probably gonna be slow. All right, so number four, guys, and the one we choose to use, we say the best for the last in our <laughs> opinion, it's gonna be uh, internet streaming, okay? So what are some of the negatives with internet streaming? Well, it can be really affected by the weather and as well mm -hmm. as the area you're in, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're in a place that has no cellular coverage, depending who your carrier is, um, if there's no cellular coverage, this is not gonna work, okay? Uh, second thing, the data can be costly. Now, depending on the plan you have, uh, you may be spending a lot of money on data. Now, we are grandfathered into a plan and uh, we have a video we'll post up here we're $34.99 a month, unlimited data, no cap. Um, I don't know how long that's gonna last for, but we're riding the wave as long as we can. And we actually do have a plan to go to something else uh, if that gets cut off. But for right now, we are using up the gigs like crazy, okay? <laughs> you need the equipment to set it up and it can be rather expensive. So like our setup, you know, it can be as, as cheap or as expensive as if you want it. You can, you can stream, just use your, your phone as a hotspot, okay? now. We won't get into all that. We have a video, like I said, we'll link that above, but our setup is probably just shy of $1,000, okay? So, but it works really well. Right. So it can be a little costly, right? And the final thing that we think, you gotta be a little tech savvy. Not like a genius, not like a programmer, but you kinda have to know a little bit of how like networks uh, work and how to set one up for it to be working pretty well. That's why I thank God for this one right here. <laughs> And last but not least, the advantages of internet streaming. So the first one is you have access to the World Wide Web, right? You have the world at your fingertips. That's a huge one for us. Yeah, you could uh, do a FaceTime to Dubai if you want yeah. from your RV, right? Not so like we have, but great, you can. Great advantage of having internet on your RV. Uh, you could watch a variety of different services, right? That could be, um, you know, from like a Netflix or Hulu or, you know, Sling. Sling, Google TV, all of them, right? You can get all the programming you want. A lot of those have built-in DVR. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can do pay-per-view. You could also do, guys, IPTV. And I'm not going to get into all that. If you know what IPTV is, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into all that, but you need internet to do that, okay? You have the, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. This is yours. Okay. <laughs> so, well, yeah, we broke it down. You do have the ability then to set up cameras thermostats things like we've done videos on all of our camera systems we have the thermostat in there the govi to check on the dogs um, and this is all run because of this so that is a huge perk for us because we take um, a lot of advantage of that uh, like i said earlier you have the ability to have cloud dvr if you don't know what cloud dvr is dvrs will be able to record stuff right like on dish or um, direct tv you're actually you're recording to a hard drive that's like in your RV. Cloud DVR, you are recording to a cloud, like a server somewhere else. So like with uh, 
our YouTube TV, we can just record all the time, yeah. right? And yeah. we don't have to pay extra for that. That's included in the $50 a month, whatever it is, $49 a month. Right. Um, the last one is streaming TV is the future. Now look, everybody has different opinions of what to use and what's best. Everything here has, as we said, has its advantages and disadvantages. The internet streaming is what we love and that's where we see things headed, really headed down the path in, in terms of uh, future. So that's our favorite. Not that we're knocking any other kind. For us, this is what works best. Yeah, I'm going to touch on like streaming TV is the future. It is, guys. If you look at at every every aspect, new equipment that's coming out, it's mm -hmm. all web based, wireless cameras, uh, streaming service. Like you can't get UFC unless you have ESPN Plus. That is only streaming. Now streaming TV, you can see everything out there. That that is the wave of the future. Only as internet gets better, 5G, satellite internet um, that's going to be high speed. It's going to go that route. So. Mm -hmm. That's what we chose. Yeah. That's what we do. And, uh, and it works great for us. It works great for yep. us. So those are four ways you can get TV on your RV. Um, you can put in the comments below, how do you get TV or internet on your RV? Yes. And also feel free to share this video for somebody, you know anyone that's looking to get TV or internet on their RV. And if you have questions about how we do it or you know the specifics, put them below. We want to hear from you. And to the left of us, we are going to put our RV DIYs as well as our essential RV upgrades. And for myself and MJ, we thank you guys for watching. We'll see, see you, you on, on the, the road. road.